Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So welcome back and uh, today again we will continue our discussion on this eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This is lecture number 50 and uh, we will mainly focus on diagonalization and also uh, its applications uh, for solving system of linear equations also for getting the power of the matrices etcetera. So, what is the diagonalization of the matrix? We will uh, discuss here now. So, a square matrix A is said to be diagonalizable if there exists an invertible matrix P, if there exists an invertible matrix P such that this P inverse A P is a diagonal matrix or in other words because this concept we have already introduced the similarity of the matrices. So, in other words if A is similar to a diagonal matrix because if uh, the, the point is here A is called uh, diagonalizable, if we can write down this A as this P inverse uh, uh, the, the P inverse A P is a diagonal matrix then we call that this A is diagonalizable. So, the meaning this A is uh, similar to the diagonal uh, matrix here P inverse A P and this P is an invertible matrix which we have to find. Uh, so, that this P inverse A P becomes a, a diagonal matrix. So, let A be an n cross n matrix and that is a nice result that A is always diagonalizable that means, we can find such a P who, uh, such that this P inverse A P is a diagonal matrix. So, the, the result is here A is diagonalizable if A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So, that is a nice result here nothing to do with this. Uh, eigenvalues actually we have to look for for the eigenvectors. So, if we get n linearly independent eigenvectors then the A can be diagonalized and if we cannot get uh, these uh, n linearly independent eigenvectors then the A is not diagonalizable. So, that is the main result of this uh, lecture again we will not go through the formal proof here, but we will see with the help of many examples how this is uh, working. And uh, another uh, subsequence of this result we can we can have here if n is a n cross n matrix here a and it has n distinct eigenvalues then also a is diagonalizable and then reason is clear because if we have n distinct eigenvalues then we will also get n linearly independent eigenvectors that is the result we have already seen in previous lecture that corresponding to distinct eigenvalues we have uh, uh, linearly independent eigenvectors. So, eventually this uh, second result here is, is again the same as, as uh, this uh, previous one uh, that A is diagonalizable if and only if it has n linearly independent vectors. So, just a note here that this matrix P which diagonalizes A is called the modal matrix of A and whose columns I mean the point is how to find this uh, matrix P. So, here this modal matrix P uh, has the columns that are nothing but the eigenvectors corresponding to these different uh, eigenvalues. So, if we have n linearly independent eigenvectors we will just place them in, in, in this matrix P as the columns and this is our matrix this P and when we check this P inverse A P that will be nothing but the diagonal matrix and entries of these uh, diagonal matrix will be just the eigenvalues uh, corresponding to these uh, eigenvectors we have placed in the sequence as columns of this matrix P. So, now here let us consider this example uh, with A 5 4 and 1 2. So, here we will not spend much of our time for computing eigenvalues and eigenvectors because that we have already seen in previous lectures. So, we can compute the eigenvalues for this uh, example and then uh, it comes to be 1 and 6 because the idea is simple uh, that this 5 minus uh, lambda and then we have 4 and 1 2 minus lambda. So, this uh, determinant we have to solve which uh, we can make this product here the 10 
and then we will have here minus 2 and minus 5. So, minus 7 lambda and plus this lambda square and minus 4 is equal to 0. So, this is lambda square uh, minus this 7 lambda and then we have here uh, uh, 6 is equal to 0 and that can factorize to this minus uh, 6 minus 1. So, lambda minus 6 and lambda minus 1 is equal to 0. So, here we get these uh, eigenvalues uh, as 1 and 6. So, having these eigenvalues now corresponding to each we have to find the eigenvector and here we have indeed these distinct eigenvalues. So, we will get two linearly independent eigenvectors and uh, then we can uh, diagonalize this matrix. So, here the eigenvectors corresponding to 1 will be coming as uh, this minus 1 1. So, that is corresponding to this one and corresponding to 6 we will get here uh, 4 1. And now, once we have the eigenvectors we can uh, formulate this model matrix which we call P. So, the P will be we are placing these uh, matrices uh, these vectors the eigenvectors as columns of this P. So, here minus 1 1 that is the first column and then this 4 1 that is the second column. So, our model matrix is ready now and we can verify that uh, how this P inverse AP, AP look like. So, here we have to get this P inverse also that is the inverse. So, for 2 by 2 matrix it is uh, simple. So, we have uh, to divide here by this a determinant and then uh, we need to change the sign and determinant will be again with minus sign. So, finally, we will get uh, this as the as the uh, p inverse of this uh, matrix p which we can also verify by multiplying these two and we are getting the identity matrix. So, here the p inverse and uh, if we compute this p inverse a p. So, that is coming to be 1 6 in the diagonal and uh, it is a diagonal matrix and this is exactly the point here. So, we have kept in our model matrix this these vector minus 1 1 as the first column and that was corresponding to the eigenvalue 1 and that is the reason here this first eigenvalue is coming and in the second case we have kept this uh, second column which was corresponding to the 6 here and therefore, the second uh, element in the diagonal is, is 6 here. So, this order if we change for example, for instance the order here. So, if we change if we change it to p like 4 1 and minus 1 1 if we change if we uh, take this p if we take this model matrix then uh, here p inverse a p when we compute this will be 6 uh, uh, 0 and uh, 0 1 because here this was corresponding to this 6 uh, and then this is corresponding to uh, this number 1 here. So, accordingly that order will change. So, the order we place here for the eigenvectors corresponding order will be followed in the diagonal entries as the uh, eigenvalues. So, that is important. Second point here which uh, also needs to be mentioned that this is not the unique eigenvector for instance. So, we can multiply by any number to this uh, minus 1 1 that will be also the eigenvector again here also this 4 1 we can multiply by any scalar that will also be the eigenvector because eigenvectors are not unique. And by doing so also there is no problem we can keep any uh, vector here not only minus 1 and 1 we can also place for example, minus 2 and 2 here in the first column and in the second column we can place for instance we multiply by 2 here. So, 8 and 2. So, we can place 8 and 2 in the second column. So, does not matter that will be taken care by this p inverse and still this product will give us uh, the same diagonal matrix 1 0 0 6. So, here it is a material that uh, whether we multiply here to this uh, eigenvectors by some scalars it does not matter with this p inverse a p will lead to the same eigen uh, same diagonal matrix uh, whose entries will be 1 and 6. The only thing uh, matter again it is the order here we place these eigenvectors. So, the order we keep here placing as these columns of uh, these eigenvectors in the same order these eigenvalues will appear. 
So, here another example of this 3 by 3 matrix uh, 6 minus 2 2 and then we have minus 2 3 and minus 1 2 minus 1 3. So, for this matrix also if you want to check whether it can be diagonalized or not and what will be the diagonal matrix, what will be the model matrix. So, for that we need to compute the eigenvalues. So, the eigenvalues for this matrix will be coming 2 2 and 8. So, again now uh, we, uh, for each eigenvalue we need to compute the eigenvector to form this model matrix P and the corresponding to this uh, eigenvalues uh, this 2 2 the repeated one. So, here the uh, algebraic multiplicity of this 2 is 2 and now we compute the eigenvector uh, corresponding to this. So, here this 2 minus 2 and minus 2. So, that will be the the, the matrix there which we want to solve uh, as this system of linear equations. So, by doing so what we are actually getting here we are getting 3 linearly independent eigenvector meaning this geometric uh, multiplicity of uh, 2 is 2 and uh, uh, also it is uh, uh, as the algebraic multiplicity is 2 also the geometric multiplicity in this particular case is coming to be 2. So, this is corresponding to this 2, this is also corresponding to 2 and here we have this uh, corresponding to this uh, 8. So, we have 3 linearly independent linearly independent eigenvectors and that is the reason now we can actually diagonalize this matrix because we need 3 matrices. Uh, remember just easy to remember here the the model P here the model matrix P will be of the same order as A. So, we need this uh, 3 uh, columns to fill the matrix P. So, if we have 3 linearly independent uh, vectors we can form this P otherwise uh, for, for example, corresponding to 2 if it happens that we have only one eigenvector then we cannot form this P. In other words, uh, the matrix A is not diagonalizable in that case. So, here the matrix A is diagonalizable because we are getting 3 linearly independent eigenvector and the model matrix P here we will place this 1 2 0 minus 0 2 first 2 columns and the corresponding to 8 we have this mi 2 minus 1 as a third column. So, this is corresponding to 2 the first column this is also corresponding to 2 and this corresponds to 1 the third column. So, our uh, order will remain exactly this one and this will become the, the diagonal entries of the matrix P inverse A P. So, if we compute the P inverse A P now, so we need to get this P inverse and then this product we have to to make and then we will get this 2, 2 uh, and 8 exactly the, the order we have placed here these eigenvectors. So, we are getting these diagonal entries absolutely the same here 2, 2, 8. So, that is the, the diagonal matrix here which is similar to the matrix A and later on we will observe uh, several good properties about this uh, matrix because uh, they share many uh, common properties uh, these uh, similar matrices and uh, some of the applications very important applications when we can once we can diagonalize the matrix we can we can uh, use them in many applications. So, that will be the also topic of discussion of this lecture. So, the last example here we will take another one where uh, we do see this is the lower triangular matrix with entries uh, 2 to 3 in the diagonals and then we have this 4 in the off diagonal rest everything is 0. So, in this case if we compute the eigenvalues we know for the triangular matrices. So, this is 2 2 3. So, the eigenvalues will be 2 2 and 3 and we have to compute again the eigenvectors corresponding to the 2 and also corresponding to this 3. What happens in this case that here this uh, algebraic multiplicity of 2 is 2 and it comes to be that uh, the geometric multiplicity of this 2 is 1 and that is the point where uh, actually we cannot uh, diagonalize the system because the geometric multiplicity is not equal to the algebraic multiplicity for this uh, eigenvalue 2 then we will get less number of eigenvectors and we cannot form uh, this model matrix P. So, here the corresponding to these uh, these two eigenvalues the repeated eigenvalue 
we are getting only one eigenvector and the reason is clear because if we uh, formulate this equation a minus lambda i x is equal to 0. So, what will happen here uh, we get uh, this uh, 0 0 0 and then we have here 4 this again 0 0 and 0 0 1. This is the situation of this uh, system of equation for the eigenvector here and the right hand side 0. So, for this system of equation what do observe what do we observe here that we have the two pivots element here 4 and also this 1 these are the pivot elements and the free variable we have only one that is uh, here x 2. So, x 2 is free variable free variable that means, we can choose this x 2 whatever we like. So, let us take this alpha and then directly from these equations we observe that the x 1 is 0 from this uh, second equation and from this third equation we observe that x 3 is equal to 0. So, the eigenvectors x 1, x 2, x 3 in this case corresponding to this repeated eigenvalue is coming to be 0 uh, 1 0 and any multiple of this uh, 0 1 0. So, that is here we have taken just alpha 1. So, this is one of the eigenvectors here uh, and then corresponding to 3 also we can compute the eigenvector and that is naturally it will come uh, 1 only. So, we have 2 minus 1 and 1. So, with these 2 vectors because we need 3 vectors to fill the positions of this model matrix P. So, we cannot do in this case because we are getting 2 linearly independent eigenvectors and uh, therefore, this matrix A is not diagonalizable. So, the given matrix is not diagonalizable. So, the, what we have seen here that every matrix we cannot diagonalize, we can diagonalize only those matrices when uh, the eigenvectors the set of these eigenvectors is full means uh, if it is a n by n. Uh, matrix, then if we get n linearly independent eigenvectors, then we can diagonalize the, the matrix, otherwise we cannot diagonalize uh, the matrix. Now, coming to the applications of the diagonalization, the first application we will consider that we can easily compute the power of the matrices once uh, we can diagonalize the matrix. So, why so? What is the the connection here to the to the eigenvalues eigenvectors that we will see now. So, this p inverse a p what we have seen that a can be diagonalized then we have this relation uh, p inverse a p is equal to d or we can uh, uh, rewrite it that a is equal to. So, we multiply by p here first. So, it will be p d and then the right side we will multiply by p inverse. So, we will get uh, out of this relation here a is equal to p d and p inverse. So, having this relation then uh, if we want to multiply or we want to get this a power 2 or a square in that case. So, we need to multiply this p d p inverse with the p d p inverse and then uh, with this associativity property of this product we will uh, we realize here that this p inverse p is there which we can uh, put as as the identity uh, matrix and then we will get here p d and d p inverse meaning this p and the power of this uh, diagonal matrix. So, here the a square the power of this matrix this 2 power of this matrix is coming to be that this power is exactly translated to the power of this diagonal matrix. What is the use here that this diagonal matrix we can easily uh, get this power here because this power will directly go to this diagonal entry. So, we do not have to actually uh, multiply these matrices d here for this power, but only the diagonal entries will be squared uh, and that is the reason here. So, the a square is very simple now the p d square p inverse. So, we have to only do these multiplications. Naturally, when we have a, a high, high, high power here not just for the 2 because in any case now we have to do this multiplication p d square and also this with the p inverse. So, here 
naturally the work work is more if we just want to find out this power 2 but in case for example we want to power uh, to get the power 1000 then definitely this will be very very useful because d power uh, higher power will be easier to compute. So, why uh, this a square is coming d square we can uh, continue this idea for example, a 3 also the same similar structure will happen. So, this p d square p inverse that is for a square and then again multiplied by a and this p inverse p will again become uh, the identity matrix and we will have p d q p inverse. So, what is the point here that uh, we can see out of these calculations that a power n will be also just uh, d power n here and this p d power n p inverse. So, this will continue uh, this uh, power here on translating to this matrix t. So, in general also we can prove that this a power n is nothing but the p d power n and p inverse. So, we can use uh, as, as I said before when we want to compute this very uh, high power of this matrix uh, a large number here and then this is very very useful because d power uh, n uh, the computation here is, is very simple because if we take two diagonal matrix for example, uh, this here and we want to multiply with the same. So, what will happen now? So, if you multiply this, this a square will come and then this product will be 0 here also this will be 0 and b square will come. So, what happens when we do the product of the diagonal matrix just simply we will uh, this power this power will go to the diagonal entries. So, we do not have to do this this multiplication as the as the as the matrix multiplication just simply when we have uh, the power n. So, for instance we have this a 0 0 b and we want to get this power n there. So, this will be nothing but the a power n 0 and b power n. So, that is the, the point here. So, having this relation that a power n is nothing but the d power n here. So, that is very simple to compute and then finally, we need to com make these product with the p and the p inverse. So, that is the only only uh, computation load here for this matrix multiplication, but for d power n only that linear relations here. So, uh, these diagonal entries uh, will be powered and nothing nothing else. So, let us just go through one example which uh, says this find a power 5 for a is equal to 1 4 and half 0. So, but to do so we have to compute the eigenvalues and also the eigenvectors because we need that p and we also need that diagonal matrix. So, in this case the eigenvalues are coming to be minus 1 and 2 and then we compute the eigenvectors corresponding to minus 1 it is 2 1 and corresponding to 2 it is coming as 4 1. So, having this we can now uh, uh, form this p the model matrix p. So, we are placing these eigenvectors here as the columns. So, the first column uh, we have 2 minus 1 and the second column we have this 4 1. So, having this model matrix now we can compute this p inverse again uh, easily and then this a power p as per our discussion in the earlier slide. So, we have this p and the d power p and p inverse. So, we have to uh, get this uh, power of the diagonal matrix and then we have to multiply by this p and p inverse. So, looking at this one, so we have this p inverse and then this d d was. So, what will be the d? We have the eigenvalues minus 1 and 1. So, this d will become uh, simply uh, we have to place these eigenvalues in the order we have placed uh, uh, these eigenvectors in p. So, this was the corresponding to, to minus 1, the second was corresponding to, to 2. So, therefore, this order will be maintained here in the eigenvalue. So, that is the matrix this d here. So, the d power 5 is just minus 1 power 5 and this 2 power 5 which is here. So, we can actually compute a very high power also the computational load will remain the same only thing we have to we have to just do this uh, power here of the diagonal entries. 
So, and then uh, later on we have to in any case just multiply by this p and the p inverse. So, it is it is easy now to find having this relation any power of the matrix uh, A. So, here the A power 5 when we do this multiplication that is coming this 21 44 and this 5.5 and this 10. So, that is A power 5, but it is usually used when we really want to have um, we want to compute a high power of, of this matrix A. Uh, then this is computationally very very efficient as compared to doing the product of uh, matrices A. So, here was the one of the applications where we use this uh, eigenvalues eigenvectors or in particular this idea of the diagonalization of the matrix. Now, coming to uh, the next application which is the solution of the system of linear differential equations, though the differential equations will be the topic of the next uh, few lectures, but here just to introduce the idea of this uh, or the application of this uh, diagonalization, we will be doing very simple example also. So, here we consider the linear uh, differential equation. So, here it is a system, system means we have a, a more than one uh, differential equations and their variables are coupled. So, here we have uh, uh, this uh, the left hand side uh, for example, this is the derivative term. So, meaning that we have uh, like this d x 1 d t and uh, suppose we have two equations. So, d x uh, 2 over d t and then right hand side some matrix is given here. So, a 1 1 a 1 2 a 2 1 a 2 2 and then the variable here x 1 and x 2. So, we have these two unknowns uh, for example, in this system x 1 and x 2 and uh, this is the system because the first equation of this system d x 1 over d t is having this x 1 and x 2. So, a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 uh, x 2 and the second equation here is d x 2 over d t a 1 1 uh, a 2 1 x 1 and plus a 2 2 x 2. So, we have basically these two equations, these two are the differential equations. We have the ordinary derivative. So, these are the system of ordinary differential equations and uh, these are coupled because this x 1 and x 2 uh, is present in this equation 1 as well as in the equation 2. So, these are the coupled equations and they are not very easy to solve, but with the idea of this uh, diagonalization it becomes very very simple as we will observe now here. So, what we have to assume we have to assume that this matrix A is diagonalizable this coefficient matrix here is diagonalizable. So, once we know that, so we know this relation that d uh, is equal to p inverse a p. So, this d then this system here which was the derivative term of this x is equal to a is replaced now by this p d p inverse. So, p d p inverse and the x the right hand side and what we do we multiply this to p inverse now this equation. So, we have p inverse this derivative the vector of the derivative terms then we have d p inverse and this x term. Now, this is just the, the, the coefficient uh, this just the matrix here which we have the modal matrix. So, this these are just the constant the entries here p they are the constant. So, we can actually rewrite this p inverse and, and the derivative terms here are coming in this vector. So, we can simply take the derivative of uh, this p inverse x because these are the constant terms. So, this will not matter for the derivative. So, we have collectively taken this as p inverse x and the derivative right hand side p d and this p inverse uh, this x. Uh, and now, what we do we just substitute a new variable here we take for this p inverse x. So, substituting this p inverse x is equal to y a new variable we have named the new variable when we multiply this p inverse 2 x we are setting this new variable y. And our differential uh, our system here which was this uh, uh, x dot is equal to a x t which is now reduced to this y dot is equal to d y t. So, what is the benefit now? having from this system to this system. Now, do you notice that this d is the diagonal 
entries here now in the D and they are the uh, eigenvalues here are placed in this D. So, the benefit here the our system the reduced system is that here we have the derivatives term the uh, here we have this diagonal matrix and then we have the y the unknown. Now, if we just look at this multiplication what we are getting we are getting these n equations and they are actually decoupled equations now, because once we multiply this with the diagonal entries what we are getting lambda 1 uh, y 1 the second entry here lambda 2 y 2 and lambda n y n and here also we have these uh, the derivatives of y 1 y 2 y 3 y n. So, we got here the i equation I mean n equations, but they are decoupled now because the the for instance the first equation has only y 1 the second equation has only y 2 the third equation is having only y 3 and the single equation this d y uh, over d t is equal to lambda y type equations we know how to solve because all these equations are of this type d y over d t is equal to y t and we know that the, the solution here the this is uh, uh, y as some constant exponential t. So, that is the solution of this equation y is equal to c exponential time t and here we have all these equations which are no more coupled equations. So, by this idea of the diagonalization we got this from the coupled system of equations just these uncoupled system of equations which are easy to solve now. So, we will solve these each equation here the solution will be y i t is equal to c i and e power lambda i t. So, the c i's are this constant of integration. So, what do we get? We have the p inverse x t that was the our substitution which we have made for y and now we got the vector y. So, from there we can indeed get this x again back because our main variable in the given system was x or we can write down this in this expanded form. So, this x was having these n components x 1, x 2, x 3, x n here this is p the vector p uh, the vector p here is having uh, the columns as the eigen vectors right. So, here the d was the diagonal uh, matrix whose entries were lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n and here we will get the corresponding eigen vector. So, v 1, v 2 and this v 3 and so on and then we will get this v n. So, these are the corresponding eigen vectors of these eigen values lambdas. So, this was the model matrix here. So, then we can do this product as well. So, this product with the y t. So, here we have basically y 1, y 2 and y n t whose value also we know that c 1 e power lambda i t. So, this matrix vector product we can uh, take as the first column multiplied by this first element, the second column multiplied by the second element and so on. This is what we have written here for y we have substituted the c 1 e power lambda 1 t here c 2 e power lambda 2 t c n e power lambda n t. So, what is the final remark here that we need to compute the eigenvalues of the given matrix A and also the eigen vectors and then we can write down finally, the solution directly that the constant terms the first eigen vector uh, corresponding to this lambda 1. So, e power lambda 1 t this eigen vector corresponding to lambda 2 eigen vector corresponding to lambda n. So, what we have to do we have to compute the this original coefficient matrix A which was given for the system of equations we need to just compute, compute the lambdas and the eigenvalues eigenvectors and then we can find the solution. So, just to demonstrate this we have taken the simple example here we can rewrite in the system form here. So, d x 1 d t d x 2 d t we can write down in this vector form this coefficient matrix 3 2 7 and minus 2 and this x 1 x 2. So, what we have to do we have to just compute the eigenvalues and eigenvector of this matrix here. So, the eigenvalues of this matrix are coming as uh, when we write down this characteristic polynomial we are getting this minus 4 and 5 as the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors we are getting here 2 7 and 1 1. So, 1 1 is corresponds to 5 and minus 4 um, corresponds to this 2 and minus 7. 
So, now we can write down the solution directly in terms of the eigenvalues eigenvectors we have the constant term we need to put this eigenvector and E exponential power this uh, lambda t again the second constant the second vector and exponential 5 t. So, what we have seen here that with the help of this diagonalization this was very easy to solve uh, such a system and uh, uh, the conclusion here is that this diagonalization of the matrix uh, we have learned and in particular we have seen these two uh, applications the power of the matrices we can easily compute with the help of this uh, idea and also the solution of the system of linear differential equations we can compute uh, with this diagonalization. So, these are the references we have used and thank you for your attention.